Hey, so a company uh, contacted us and sent us a 3D printer. Said, you know, check it out. And since it's been here, I started putting it together today. And I tell you right now, it's really looking interesting. But I want to find out why. It's got a great price, uh, good size build, uh, good features. Let's find out who this is. Yeah. This could be the very first printer I've had in here for, say, beginner level, that I can honestly say, um, looks like I'm gonna have to recommend it. The price and the features of this thing is just absolutely, it was astonishing, it really is. It just, it was mind blowing. This thing seems to have all the answers you know, in one shot. Great price, great features, and a build, a decent sized build plate, a really good sized build plate. In fact, the build plate is bigger than some of the other machines I have that cost twice as much. But that's only part, that's only a tiny bit of the story. Right now it's running, and you'll probably notice it's running quiet. It's very quiet. It has a 32 bit silent, you know, board. So for operations, it runs very quietly in the, in the home or eh, out in the garage here. Features somewhere, there's just so many of them, I don't even know where to start. But we do have the filament run out, which, you know, that's cool. But it will resume printing once you get reestablished with filament, so that's cool. Number one feature I always look at on any of these machines is this right here. The, you know, the hot end, the extruder, all of it. This one here has dual gear feeders at the top to help get the filament in, but it also has an all metal hot end. So that is a huge, that's something that you just don't get on every machine. You should, but you know, not all machines come that way. It also has dual cooling fan systems that are uh, two-sided cooling fans. So overall, this right here is awesome for a feature. But it has the nice touch screen. I really like the touch screen on this one. It's, it's decent. Uh, one little tiny caveat, I had to switch it to English. It came in, it was in Chinese. <laughs> a little trouble reading that, yeah. But, uh, once I switched to English, it was like, okay, we can get up and running now. Uh, the auto bed leveling is the best I have ever seen in any machine, ever. This one here does an amazing trick. You set it for auto bed leveling, it does an auto bed check. And then I set, told it to go ahead and print, assuming that would be an error because it wouldn't be right. It started printing perfectly right. The very first layer went down was perfect. And it was like, I had not adjusted or done anything at all. Just let it do its thing with the auto bid. And then it was printing. That is a very, that is a first out of anybody's box. But there's far more. There's dual Z uh, screws back here with dual Z motors. Again, the industry usually sort of, you know, shies away from giving you those extras. This one seems to have extras, extras and extras. You also have a nice adjustable here for tension for belt here on the on both of the accesses. So again, you know, cool. The PEI sheet, which I like PEI sheets, they're just makes it a lot faster to get a model off and get to something else sometimes. But this one here was well thought out again because it can be flipped. You can use either side. So once one side gets tired or whatever, you can flip it and keep right on going. Really well thought out. Full size SD card. Yay! Oh God. And there's more. This is a all metal hot end and it's a dual geared extruder. So it's direct drive, dual gear, all metal hot end. That to me is about that's as good as it gets for any 3D printer. And having that on this particular, like a beginner's model or something, awesome. It also has, of course, dual uh, cooling fan system for your parts so it can cool quickly and continue to make nice prints. Uh, this uh, filament all came with the machine in the box. It also comes with this really funky kind of test card for uh, setting your nozzle height when you are auto bed leveling. Now. Unlike other machines that look like this, this one here, you'll notice there's no wheels or gears under here. The auto bed leveling was that good. It, there is no adjustment and you don't need it. You can adjust it electronically on the board if you need to set the, you know, do what they call baby steps, where you take your Z and you might set it a little higher or a little bit lower than whatever the machine thought, you know, should be done. But the machine made the decision on this one this morning when we fired it up and it is, it is dead on. It is absolutely dead on. And the features just keep on coming. And if this, all of these features aren't doing anything just yet, also it has a toolbox built into the front of the machine here. So you can, you know, pack up all the little tools that it comes with. 
It also came with something different. Uh, this is a plastic scraper. I've got metal ones and they usually gouge up the plate really nicely. So it'll be interesting uh, down the road to see how the plastic one holds up. But uh, right now I already like the idea because it's just so much better on the bed that you're not tearing it up. And with a PEI, you really shouldn't really need this anyways because with a PEI, you take the sheet off, bend it a little bit, pop the model off, and then put something else together. The other features was it comes with a pre a good selection of preloaded prints that are already in the SD card so you could already go ahead and you know start printing something. Also the assembly is on the SD card there's a video. The video is uh, not bad it's 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 typical of any of these machines but uh, they go through the uh, you know setting it all up, plugging it all in and getting it running. It doesn't take long. It probably would take even a beginner you might spend maybe a whole hour you know putting the machine together carefully and making sure you've got everything done before you fire it up kind of thing. Also check, of course, the voltage at the back, like I just said the other day about that. Uh, this one was came in, it was already preset to 115, was, you know, so it was all set. Build plate size, I'm giving it to you in millimeters because all the industry seems to like to do that. This is about 230 by 230 by 250, which, like I said, that's a big size. Uh, we just looked at the King Run the other day, which is like 220. This is an even bigger build plate than that. And, or no, excuse me, I said that wrong. The King Rune was set up at uh, 200 by 200, and it was like, yeah, it's, you know, that's okay size. This is 230, so again, it's a lot of real estate. In fact, it uh, borderlines on the, uh, I think the uh, Ender 3 I have in here is about the same size, maybe not even as big. And I, again, you know, with the price, I was really not expecting this way, way, nowhere near this much machine to come in the door and be this impressive with this many features. So I kind of got excited after I started looking at it saying, you know what, this is a really good printer for an amazing price. So it's, wow, I'm not even gonna ask, boom, how did they do it? But you know, yeah, they did a nice job. It seemed like they, the industry has had a lot of dysfunctional things going on since they started with 3D printing. And this one here, it seems like somebody went through the trouble of let's tackle a lot of the issues with 3D printing and give them the features, you know, that they need on a machine to get a decent job run. So this, yeah, it's a beginner's printer, or if you want to add a second printer or a third, whatever, to your system, and you want something that's decent, reliable, has a good size build plate at a really low price, I would think this is about the best thing I've seen come in on the market to date. And this is the J, JG Maker, I believe it's the R1 is the model. What an amazing machine. Wow, interesting. So far, if everything sounds pretty good, we're gonna have a link of course in the description below but it's going to be through i believe uh there'll be a discount code and it'll be through amazon so yeah the nice gray truck will bring this right to your door in a box you know? so that's a good thing too we like ordering through amazon because usually it only takes a day or two and it's, it, it arrives you know at the door the idea here is just uh, it's like you buy the machine and then you upgrade it or something this one here is it's almost like they already upgraded everything on the machine Okay, we could go with linear rails or something fancy like that, but really overall build is just, what a crazy machine. I really am kicking myself because uh, I kind of gave these guys a bit of a hard time. You know, I was like, eh, I don't know if I want that thing in here or not. It's like, it's a, it's a $200 printer. We've got lots of those, you know? But when this one came in and I started looking at the features, I was, damn, how did they do this? <laughs> wow, this is a nice printer, you know? It's like, and it has all the features that you should be looking for in this type of build. And it looks like they just thought it all out and said, yeah, let's give it to them. Let's, let's put that together. So the next big question would be, how fast is it? Well, okay, it's not lightning fast, but it does do a Benji in 36 minutes. And that's, believe me, that's pretty fast. That's with a layer height of 0.25. So again, that's it's capable of some pretty high speed printing if if you need it you know if that's part of your need but uh i wouldn't just say this was a beginner machine this is uh up to i would say mid-range machine but because of the price it's just a good buy you know for any machine uh ratings for uh, uh, filaments uh includes uh pla pet g tpu which TPU could be a bear. Also, it's rated for ABS. So yeah, it can run all that. And the temperature range is up to 260 degrees Celsius on the nozzle. 
maximum uh, bed temperature is up to 100 Celsius. Of course, I use 60 and 80 between the two different uh, plastics, mostly that I run through. There's another feature here I want to show you. Uh, I'm going to take the build plate off for a second. Right here are plastic corners so that when you put your magnetic sheet in, you can hit up into those corners first and then drop it on. And that lines it up beautifully with the bed, which is really a good feature. Another little extra feature, like I said, JG uh, Maker really put this thing together. Wow, you know, it's, it's amazing how many features are in this thing. Uh, there's also a preloaded print in here that will create an extra spool, which hooks up to the top spool on the other side. So you can have two spools you know, preloaded up here, ready to go. Now, obviously you can only one, one color at a time, but it's nice that you can have that second spool sitting up there waiting when you're ready to switch colors or something. You can do it easily on the machine and you can leave the two spools up there. So that's a interesting feature. The problem I'm having here, I guess, is they even say market it towards the idea of being a first or beginner's printer, but uh, when you look at all these features and the way this thing works and operates, it's like it's really just a good printer. You know, it doesn't have to be a beginner. You could um, easily add this to, say, printers that you already have, and you would be adding a really good machine at a very low price that's full of features. You know, yeah. Another odd but interesting feature uh, when the parts came in, every assembly has an extra screw that you use when you're putting this together. So you have one extra spare screw for everything on the machine that you're going to be assembling. And that was like, you know, they didn't need to do that, but that's cool. You know, it's nice they did that. Plus, of course, full set of tools, which also completely fit in the toolbox. There's a place for everything in there, even though the toolbox is kind of small, but it holds all of it. So uh, there's also a USB. Uh, USB to full-size SD card, which is included with the kit. So uh, Again, you know, just small things, but little things like this make life a whole lot easier for a 3D printer. Uh, the other thing that they did was, of course, they include the original uh, PLA, blue, I guess we'll call it, that went through the machine, tested before, of course, it ships. And you also get a full roll, well, a nice spool of orange, which is, uh, I guess it's about a half a kilogram or so, roughly, uh, just guessing on that one, but it's a good amount of orange filament that you can run quite a few projects off before you're done. So there's a lot of little features in here that I saw that I just, again, over and over was like, boom, boom, boom. It was like, this little bugger is amazing, you know? With the overall everything good situation here, there was one odd thing that did show up here that uh, kind of threw me off a little bit. And I really i am against this sort of thing, but they did include a glue stick. I uh, don't need a glue stick. I don't know why they include it because the machine seems to, you know, PEI bids are, I think they're awesome. You know, they, the, the, the PLA and everything just sticks to them as soon as you heat them up to 60 degrees Celsius, the PLA seems to go on as, you know, the first layer or whatever. So uh, I guess, if you have trouble with something like say like ABS or something like that, maybe, maybe the glue stick, I really don't know. Maybe comment in below why they would include a glue stick with the machine because the machine, from what I can see, it just absolutely does not need it. And I've never used glue stick or hairspray on any of my machines because I don't want that stuff flying around or end up on the machine. I like to keep my machines nice and clean and operating and I've got 10 of the 10 different machines all running all the time on and off for jobs. So it was like, why a glue stick? I don't know. But uh, yeah, that was, uh, well, maybe we'll get some comments below as to why a glue stick. I don't know. I guess we need to talk about software. Uh, software wise, uh, JG Maker seems to have its own in house. It looks like a version of Marlin, and I think that's what it is. It's just simply dealing with G code, it seems to do the trick. But uh, I did use Cura, uh, Ultimate Cura, and for the machine profile, uh, I used uh, the uh, JG Maker Aurora in order to get the right profile for the machine so I could do my uh, own sli in-house slicing or uh, you know, either download from Thingiverse or draft something up on you know, Fusion 360, put it over to Ultimate Cura, and then uh, set up for running a, a G-code job. And that was brings me to the next item. There is something missing here, and uh, I don't think it's, it, to me it's not a deal breaker by any means, but I didn't see any Wi-Fi settings or Wi-Fi capability on the machine, but 
you know, for me, that's fine. I don't use the Wi-Fi on any of my machines except for maybe to download an update or something for software. But beyond that, normally I don't use it. I just don't have any reason to use it. Along all that too, also there's included a uh, USB to uh, printer type cable. So you can plug this, plug this directly into like your laptop or your computer or something if you want to directly run the, you know, say send a print over to the printer. Again, this is something I never use, but I'm seeing a lot of printers these days are not coming with these anymore. So this is sort of becoming a weird kind of gray area right now. I don't know of anyone, and again, maybe I'll get somebody to you know, comment below if you even use the uh, printer cable. I don't think I have ever used the printer cable ever for any of my machines. But again, if you were say, uh, had to upload some new software or something maybe to the machine, you might you know, need something like this. But uh, uh, it's got a great warranty card and it's uh, got a customer service line and you know this is a professional company that makes you know industrial equipment oh they also included an extra nozzle one extra nozzle it's a 0.4 it's 0.4 in there and there's 0.4 spare so that's a good thing if for you know like i said a beginner to maybe intermediate printer that's where this thing falls into place but i can't get over the price for the features and for the build I think it's pretty amazing. I tell you the truth, I almost wonder if they're not just selling these off and they won't make them anymore or something because, you know, for the price and everything, what an awesome little printer. <laughs> I've got to thank JG Maker for sending this over to us to check, check it out because I didn't realize how, you know, much this thing was going to be. I, it was just like, I had no idea what was coming in the door and I am, I am just, I'm thrilled, I'm surprised. And it was like, yeah, you guys did an awesome job of, you know, putting this printer together. In the meantime, I got to get out of here. So we're going to say, you know, please like, share, subscribe, and ring the notice bell. Uh, over and out.